The Rams had run the four-minute mile and then were asked to go another quarter. The tape had proved just out of reach. The end of the season would not be the Super Bowl, but the playoff bowl. It would not only be the conclusion of a brilliant season, but more importantly, the first game of 1968. Defensively, David Deacon Jones set the pace, and for his efforts, he was voted Defensive Player of the Game. His performance so impressive that there were other nominations. Roman Gabriel was voted Offensive Player of the Game. He engineered a gambling attack that burgeoned into one of tactical brilliance. Gabriel is remarkably strong. Couple this with a gambler's passion. You have a quarterback that will bootleg on fourth and one. Gabriel picked up the first down by 20 yards. A change of quarters indicates no change in Ram aggressiveness. Fourth down, two at the two. And already, safe margin would suggest a field goal. But it was not a day of conservative choices. Billy Truax gets the six points. From the Cleveland Nine, Willie Ellison explodes around right end. Ellison voted the Rams' top rookie. He fits the mold for 68. The defense held Cleveland to six points. The important number, however, is 30. In newspaper parlance, it means the end. 3-0 was the end of the 67 season, but every end also implies a fresh beginning. After 12 Sundays, 59 minutes and six seconds came the crucial juncture of the 67 season. At this one particular moment, 1967 was indeed the year of the Ram. While opposing quarterbacks often found themselves launching their delivery from flat on their backs, Bill Munson operated from a privileged sanctuary. The result, a score to Bucky Pope. It was one of 28 touchdown passes. Points came in a variety of ways, in two and three. Points came in a variety of ways. Most importantly, they came in sixes. Lester Josephson and Dick Bass expressed an authority on the ground. They accounted for more than 1,400 yards and 10 touchdowns. It was colorful, it was exciting, it was hard, direct football. It was a style that grew up out of the offensive line. The line is the launching pad of glory. Little of it, however, finds its way to the heavily muscled shoulders of the men down in the dirt. Ken Iman, Tom Mack, Joe Chabelli, Don Chewy, Joe Carollo, and Charlie Cowan provided a head-ripping point of departure that allowed Ram runners to turn in one of the best performances of the season against the Dallas Cowboys, a team that specializes in stopping the run. The ability to run would prove to be the decisive factor in this early season game that matched two title aspirants in the Cotton Bowl. The eventual Eastern Conference champions couldn't cope with Ram power. Final score was 35 to the Cowboys, 13. Rosie Greer was sidelined early in the season. His frustration would be compounded by the end of this long, gray Baltimore afternoon. The Rams struck brilliantly and swiftly. A full Baltimore blitz, linebackers and a safety, lose the gamble. Roman Gabriel fires a fingertip bomb to Jack Snow. The incredible catch is quickly balanced by a typical Unitas drive, culminating with Lenny Moore sweeping left hand. Combination of Gabriel to Snow worked once, it will again. With almost an arrogant casualness, Snow continues to maintain his reputation of never having been caught from behind. The next Ram scoring opportunity will be via the field goal. 
Bruce Gossett punches the ball exactly 47 yards. It bounces through the uprights to three points. The Rams now need a touchdown to talk. Unitas is in his glory when it comes to killing the clock, controlling the ball. Maxie Bond defies the master's touch, and the Rams are still alive. Bernie Casey has taken the time to slip free in the corner of the end zone. The score is tied, 24-24. Unitas has one more chance. Willie Richardson had beaten Clarence Williams once. Unitas goes back to the well. A splendid effort by Williams wrests the ball from Baltimore. Possession is hotly disputed by the Colts. It would have meant sure field goal range and victory. The referee's decision will be final. Three thousand miles and a week later back in California, the repercussions of the tie would be dramatically underlined. The Rams would play another 60-minute deadlock, but then so would Baltimore. Going into the seventh week, the record stood at three, one, and two. The Rams had been playing at 100 percent. Hereafter, 110% would be necessary. Desire would be the keynote for the confrontation in Wrigley Field with the Bears. The Rams had not won in Chicago since 1959. Every ounce of desire would be necessary to regain the winning track. Jack Pardee blocks the attempt. Irv Cross recovers. The Rams quickly take the offensive initiative. Isolating Josephson on a linebacker is a tactic worth six points. Blood in their eye, the Bears come hard, intent on mayhem. They aren't playing control, and the Mason to Casey option clicks. Victory was won, the necessary momentum was achieved. The Rams were on their way. For the next four weeks, the Rams were an irresistible force. The defense came up with a goal line stand while the offense bolstered their record of success on short yardage situation. 49ers 7, Rams 17. Against the Eagles, it was a case of execution. George Allen has a set of goals, one of which is protecting the quarterback. The maximum a quarterback could be thrown was set at 31 times. As it was, they fell but 25 times during the season. Against the Eagles, Ram execution, perfect. Gabriel wasn't thrown once. Eagles 17, Rams 33. Consider a halfback on the fly. A defense must make quick adjustments. Clarence Williams does just that. But then quick adjustments can be overcome, as shown by Lester Josephson. Atlanta 3, Rams 31. The sweep is probably the most fundamental play in football. It's always power. It often adds up to points. Lamar Lundy has his own interpretation of how it should work. Detroit 7, Rams 31. At the end of the 11th week, the Packers sewed up the Central Division. After 12 weeks in the Coastal Division, the Rams had yet to face the worst. They would have to win both remaining games to edge the Colts. And meanwhile, the Colts were continuing to win with undeniable authority. The 13th week, and the task at hand is the Packers. By 
the end of the first quarter, Green Bay has gained a 7-0 lead. Undaunted by the deficit, Gabriel methodically sets out for a score himself. Throwing across the grain, he targets Jack Snow. Snow led all NFL regulars with a 26-yard average on pass reception. This one accounts for only 17 yards, but it's a touchdown. At the outset of the second half, the Rams found themselves behind again. It would be necessary to create a clear-cut control. Mack and Iman begin at the beginning by blocking. Roman Gabriel established a team record for most touchdown passes in a season. This one was extremely important as it did indeed establish control. Rams 14, Packers 10. The Rams sustained their momentum by adding a field goal, but field goals are followed by kickoffs. And Travis Williams happened to be on the receiving end of this one. Williams will sprint 104 yards for a score. It will be countered by another Gossett field goal, which in turn is overshadowed by another Packer touchdown. With two minutes remaining, the Packers lead 24-20. More importantly, they are in possession. The Rams have two timeouts left. George Allen knows the clock and Green Bay will confront the Rams with an unparalleled test of character. Never was the presentation of Deacon Jones' all-pro credentials more timely. As long as there is Jones, there is hope. Merlin Olson makes a similar presentation, and the Packers will have to punt. There is less than a minute. It's hope against hope. The Rams gamble everything. There will be no run back. Tony Guillory blocks the punt. As Claude Crabb fields the ball, the Rams know that the gamble is won. All that remains is to score, and it has to be a six-pointer. It has to be the six-pointer against one of the most proud defenses in the league. On second down, the exquisite agony is wiped away. Gabriel had come back to Bernie Casey and the professionalism meant six points. Once again, a critical test had been met. Now it all boiled down to the final 60 minutes. The Colts have an 11-0-2 record. The Rams have a 10-1-2 record. Remember that tie in Baltimore? Today, a tie is as terminal as a loss. It has to be all or nothing. Since October, the Rams have trailed the Colts by a game. Now in the showdown, they trailed by four in the first quarter. The Colts have momentum, but in an instant, that momentum slips away. John Mackey on third and nine gives yardage in order to gain that which has already been won. A set of sticking cleats stops the Baltimore drive. Sensitive to the cold failure, Gabriel strikes quickly. Jack Snow will take the bomb at the apex of his pattern. He sprints in untouched. At 5.38 of the second quarter, the Rams have decisively and with finality tipped the initiative in their favor. The fearsome foursome, principally David Jones, Harris Unitas to the point of distraction. Eddie Matter intercepts the ill-considered pass. Gabriel will press to bolster this halftime lead. Bernie Casey gets the honor. The last quarter would prove to be all Ram. A precise execution moved the ball. But it was a sustained, drilled excellence that made the difference. Billy Truax scores. This excellence wasn't an exclusive with the offense. A pell-mell rush led by Merlin Olsen and David Cahill buckles United. Then it's Jones. Then on offense, it's Dick Bass. The final score is 34 to 10. 
It had been a four-minute mile pace for the Colts, but they had fallen before the tape. Baltimore had ended a noble season. Their run had been brilliant. On August 2nd, the Rams started, sweeping their preseason schedule for the first time. They went on to accumulate the best regular season record in their history. The Coastal Division Championship had been won from the best competition in the league. A blend of execution and desire allowed the Rams to score the most points in the league. Execution and desire allowed the Rams to yield the fewest points in the league. More than one million fans came to the stadiums to see George Allen's Rams develop the best overall record in professional football. It had been a glorious season. It had been the four-minute mile, a lung-bursting race to glory. The collective nervous system, however, had taken a pounding. The courage remained, but there had been an emotional drain. Time was still running. The Rams must go one more lap. Green Bay, the Central Division champions, a tenacious team. Their practiced counterpunchers the conference championship will be a bitter struggle. Bernie Casey and the offense have proved they can score. It is now up to the defense to prove that they can stop the Packers. Chuck Lampson intercepts Bart Starr's pass. The return yields excellent field position. Then it happened. 20 weeks of excellence finally demanded its price. It was a price that could not be measured. The Rams were dulled, emotionally crystallized. When the field goal was denied, the pendulum had clearly swung in Green Bay's favor. All that had been done so well heretofore was suddenly impossible. It was a matter of inches. It was as if the tape had been abruptly moved just out of reach. For a while, the defense still operated on a deep-grained pride and habit. But the Packers are practiced counterpunchers, and finally, they asserted their will. The defeat could not have been more final. There would be no Super Bowl. The 21st game of the season erased the brilliance of a 17-1-2 record. It was a time of despair. At the last moment, the tape had been moved. But the Rams had never run such a race before, and now they know the tempo. They'll do it better. There is next year, the 1968 season. Rams had run a long race, and the finish was disappointing in terms of the ultimate championship. The elements of that race, however, never approached disappointment. The Rams are a team of teams. Putter John Kilgore's toe activates one of them. The specialties feature such promising players as Bob Nichols, George Berman, Gene Breen, Dyrone Talbert, Greg Schumacher, and Kelton Winston. And Tony Guillory will still be harassing opposing punters. And there is the magnificent David Jones. Violent, slashing, all pro, all everything, defensive lineman. Lamar Lundy has played with the Rams longer than any other player. Lundy's aggressiveness hasn't been diminished by his longevity. At one tackle, another all pro, Merlin Olsen. Number 78, Roger Brown is the newest member of the fearsome foursome. He replaced the injured Rosie Greer at tackle, and he replaced him with an equally effective style. The second line of defense is a combination of experience and depth. Doug Woodleaf is a promising young linebacker. The veteran starter, Myron Patios, overcame an injury to play a strong role. Maxie Bond was accorded all pro honors. Maxie, one of the most savage linebackers in the league. He's deadly reading this week. 
Vaughn called a consistently heady defensive game. George Allen feels that Vaughn and Pardee comprise the best pair of outside linebackers in the league. The interception is Pardee's specialty. Pardee led all NFL linebackers in interceptions with six. He just missed the league record by one. Pass defense is naturally the domain of the secondary. Willie Daniel was the newest member of the secondary corps, a unit that led all NFL teams in interceptions. Irv Cross played a very particular brand of halfback. His tackling so vicious that receivers had a habit of becoming detached from the football. Chuck Lamson also played the ball. On fumble recoveries or deflecting the strike, Lamson was there. Clarence Williams pulls in the carom. Williams is a big, aggressive sprinter who plays the left wing. Eddie Metter is the free safety. He's all pro too. Eight interceptions in 67 boosted his career total to 33, a new Ram record. These are the elements. These are the elements that carried the Rams to a splendid, bittersweet season that ended at the playoff bowl. The score was Browns 6, Rams 30. In newspaper parlance, 30, 3 0 means the end, and so it was for the 67 season. But every end implies a new beginning, and the playoff bowl was a victorious start for the 1968 season.